Hey guys, Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA. So today, my client came in ready for a haircut. She decided that she no longer wants to wear weaves and wigs, and she wants to be able to embrace her own hair and decided a style for her that she actually liked was a short cut. So that is what we are going to do. So I started off by giving her a preliminary cut, which is basically the sides and the back of the head. This allows for me to be able to relax the hair and really get it to lay down really nicely. When you have a shortcut, you want to make sure that the hair is laying. If it's going to be a short style, it can't have a lot of texture in the hair because that means that the hair is going to end up reverting or looking more like a texturized style. So that is the reason why I like to do preliminary cuts to remove a lot of that excess hair that I know I won't be relaxing. And secondly, I'm going to be honest, guys relaxing hair that you're going to cut off is just redundant okay i'm a hairstylist it is what it is anyhow move forward so if you notice her relaxer is now complete but her hair does still have a little bit of texture in it i like to explain a little bit about virgin relaxers virgin relaxers it's something that you build on while you can get some clients bone straight on the first relaxer, it is something that you are basically working with the hair and getting it to understand that you want it to do something. And sometimes it does still leave a little bit of texture on the first relaxer, okay? She did have the relaxer in for the adequate amount of time. Did that mean that I was going to make it even longer because, oh man, she still got a little bit of wave in her hair? No, I'm not. Why? Because I know how to lay this hair down and I know that over time we will be able to straighten the hair out even more. Secondly, this allowed her to keep some of the density in the top or the crown of her head as well as on the sides so it didn't make her hair appear to be very thin. Now I'm using our Elite Silk Wrap Foam on her hair. This foam molds like, like gold, okay? It's just like gold. It is like gold, okay? It lays down every hair and even with the slight amount of texture in her hair it still gave her a smooth mold a nice smooth wrap and it doesn't flake or foam and that's a big thing that i look for when i'm using any type of wrap foam if it flakes when i'm using it after if it feels heavy or if it feels really dry i don't like it but the good thing about the elite silk wrap foam is it doesn't do that so of course it's my foam it's always going to be my go-to and of course you can use whatever foam you like Okay, so with the mold, as you guys know, I've done 8 million molds on my channel. Make sure that your mold is nice and smooth. Your foundation is everything. Hello, foundation is everything. You lay your sideburns. You make sure that that back is nice and smooth. And a pro tip is if the back has any kink to it or it has some hairs that are flipping up, you can use a little bit of styling gel in the nape area just to get it to lay down. Now I'm using the end papers at the nape of the neck because I found that this works better, especially if you know that there's going to be a bend in the nape area or right under the occipital bone. And then I follow it with an actual wrap strip. So these are end papers that you'd use for like a roller set or a rod set. And then I use my wrap, my mega wrap strip um, to go ahead and hold them in place and to wrap the remainder of the hair. So she went into the dryer for about 45 minutes we did also do a color to her hair by the way guys um she has that nice sandy brown color that we all hate and we decided to do a jet black so we did do the jet black and it's going to give her the appearance of fullness in those areas where her hair um her her trouble areas are let me say it that way and then i just used the blow dryer just to kind of blow the crown out just a little bit more so we're going to use our babyless wireless clippers to go ahead and take some of the density out of the nape of the neck I do this with my guard fully open, so it's wide open, and then I go in a downward motion. Instead of having the blade point upward, I go downward just because I'm only removing the density, okay? Only density. But everyone does this in a different way. It's really your choice. You can use your shears. You can use razors, however you choose. And then I use my Andis T-liner or T-outliner to go ahead and edge up the areas around the hairline. I am big and I'm very funny. Um, I don't like to edge the hairline in the face or right at the edges on the client, especially on women, because it gives you a hard frame. Most men or male barbers will do it. So make sure you tell them not to do that. You don't want a hard face. We are women. We are supposed to be soft and simple and smooth and all that good stuff. So you don't want to get a hard line in the front of the face. You really want to leave that line soft. So I only edge around the ears and the nape of the neck. Okay. Now I'm going through the actual crown and I'm blending my cut. This can also be a disconnected cut. And when we say disconnected, that means that the sides don't actually meet. 
the top or the crown is a lot longer and the sides is a lot shorter but for her i did blend it slightly so it is kind of a connected slash disconnected cut in some areas cutting is something where there's really no 100 percent blueprint for this you do it in the way you see fit you move in the direction you want to move but you always make sure to follow the shape of the head don't go against the shape of the head because then you're going to create a blockhead and your client i'm more than certain does not want a blockhead okay now i did use my edgers just to kind of clear up um, a lot of the excess hair on the sideburns but i want you to take note in how i'm doing it what i'm using is the corner of the blade and i'm literally skimming the hairline i am not creating a actual hard line i just skimmed the hairline in particular you can use your shears and do this as well but i like to work hard uh, work harder I, I like to work harder not smarter no i like to work smarter and not harder okay guys so for the nape area you can do sears over comb which i like to do that as well just to kind of take out a little bit more weight wherever my clippers didn't get but for a majority of my clients i like to leave that area a little bit full slightly slightly full i did go ahead and use some of our frizz tamer and shine serum which also serves as a heat protectant and then i used a little bit of spritz and the last thing that i sprayed on was a little bit of hair gloss just to give the hair that shine now i'm using the h2 pro three tenths of an inch iron this is also known as the pencil iron i don't get paid to tell you guys what i'm using guys i just sharing is caring sharing the wealth why not there's no secret so this is the h2 pro pencil iron is what i call it but it's the three tenths of the inch it is a very good iron that's nice and close to marcel's um it's not going to ever be a marcel but it's close enough that I like it to use for my clients. So she wanted a, a little more spiky style. And with spiky styles, it also allows you to cover areas um, that you'd like to cover as long as they are not directly in the front of the head. Um, I would definitely uh, evaluate the style that you're going to do, especially if there's a client where they're having a lot of trouble in certain areas, okay? I did use some of our um, Elite Mask It in the crown area just to kind of fill in where I saw a little too much scalp. Um, of course, it's by choice. Some people use spray paint. I don't like spray paint. I actually use the Mask It and it works very well. I use the color black. Um, the Elite Mask It comes in dark brown, black, light brown, gray. Um, those are the colors that we offer. and. I, I use the black. Some people would like to mix it with black and brown because it creates a softer hue. But because her hair is in the solid color of black, I decided to use the black mask it because I wanted it to appear that there was hair there. So you guys will get to see us doing that. There we go. Hey, hey girl, hey. And then all I did was lightly sprinkle it on the scalp. Where people go wrong with hair fibers is they do it too heavily. So with the mask, it, it has a control top on it. So it makes it where you are not using too much at one time. And if you notice, I used it and I'm able to still curl her hair just as if it was a regular day. Okay. So it doesn't make the hair heavy. It doesn't make it oily and it stays where you put it. That's the great thing about our elite mask. It. And Another thing that I did notice with the mask it is when I did sprinkle it on the hair, a little bit did transfer to my fingers only because it got on her hair, but it is easily washable. Okay. It's not something that is like a stain like hair color. Okay. So in the top area, I am using my H2 Pro one inch iron to curl or spike out the top. She does have a little bit of spritz on her hair, but the hair is not hard, okay? I don't actually make the hair really firm until the end, and that is my choice of the client. So just because you have a spiky style, that doesn't mean that it has to be hard. That's not automatic. That is by choice. So I'm using a light hold spritz as I'm actually styling or curling her just to help seal the cuticle, but I'm not making the hair hard enough where I can't comb through it. So that's one thing I always tell people, especially with short styles. You don't want the hair to be too hard where you can't comb through it to actually style the hair at the end. So putting the spritz on at the end is a firm hold spritz. That is the last step. Okay. All right. So I am finishing up her style on the sideburns. I typically like to do the sideburns last because that is my way of taking out the line in the actual style itself. I don't like lines. If I can if I alleviate having lines, I definitely try, definitely try, okay? Um, and in regards to 
the actual style itself how long does this last how does she keep this so basically what she does is at night she can tie a scarf typically for me i like to use cotton especially on shortcuts because they don't move as much and i tie that around the sides and it goes towards the face so basically you tie the sides in the back and then you tie it in the front on the forehead and then at the top you know we it's hard enough or firm enough that it won't really move as much so i'm using my rake comb to actually do the comb out portion of this. Um, when it came on to the comb out portion, I did go back and put a little bit of mask it in certain areas because I did have some more areas that I wanted to fill in. And then with the rake comb, I'm just going through and just literally just pulling out some of those um, curl spikes, that's what I call them, curl spikes that I did. <laughs> and then we're just blending it in on the sides, okay? So the mask it can go on the sides. You just want to be very careful how much you use so if you notice i did use it on the sides and it filled in all of those ridges and now everything looks cohesive and nice and full which is exactly what i was going for okay and then uh we did talk about using the spray paint at home because she doesn't have any mask it i don't i don't know why she doesn't have a mask it but she doesn't have any mask it i told her where she can get it which is at elitehaircareusa.com so that was a good thing and then the remainder we just took care of what we needed to take care of now the mask it can be used on a daily basis if needed but it is something that where you put it is where it will stay and it usually can last about two to three days without perspiration so that's a good thing all right so we are going to do the big reveal here. Let's see exactly what expression she had. I like to kind of surprise my clients. But before we do the big reveal, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to thumbs up this video and comment what you thought at the end. Hey, okay. So she really, really liked it. And we're going through talking about how to actually care for it. I like to educate my clients at the end. If you notice, the hairline is nice and soft, not nice and hard. Okay, we want it to be nice and soft nice and clean and then i asked her what she thought 